With all the outrage over the pay-to-win multiplayer, people forget that there's a single-player campaign that we can be equally disappointed and angry with. Also, because I don't care about multiplayer, don't expect me to go on a rant about that in this video. However, I do understand that the vast majority of you would be getting this game for that. For those people, I have supplied 1,000 bonus sins for you to apply in any amount you desire to the final single-player tally. You will have to unlock those additional sins first by watching this entire video, liking, and then commenting. That will earn you 10 bonus sins. Doing the same across the rest of my videos will reward you with additional sins that you can have fun with. For those of you who simply don't have the time to unlock everything, you can pay a fair price to unlock them all at once. Aiden Versio. With both Watch Dogs and now Battlefront 2, names like Aiden and Aiden have become the type of name I associate with overhyped games. Inferno Squad. Commander Versio. You must be important. Interrogation scenes at the beginning of any piece of entertainment always fall into the trap of existing solely for info dumping character details. The Empire's time has come. Aiden has to be the only Imperial officer without an English accent. VZ 626. After capturing Aiden, the rebels didn't remove any of her gear and left her helmet inside her cell with her. At the very least, they had to know there was communication gear in the helmet, and Aiden's plan relied entirely on the rebels doing this. She allowed herself to be captured so she would be taken on board their ship and then free herself using her droid ID-10. Aiden's mission was to sneak on board this rebel ship that intercepted a message from the Empire that revealed they knew about the coming attack on the second Death Star. Meaning, the sole reason for this mission being in the game is so General Akbar can say it's a trap and enter meme history. And this game is canon, by the way. We should have just blown up their ship. Would have raised too many questions. For this to work, we need to be subtle. You're the Empire. You blew up an entire planet simply because it was the homeworld of a rebel leader. I don't think many people would look for a deeper meaning in the Empire destroying a rebel ship. And wouldn't an Imperial Special Forces commando breaking aboard a rebel ship and deleting an intercepted message raise even more questions? The rebels didn't back up intercepted and mission critical enemy communications. Aiden is not wearing an outfit suitable for the vacuum of space. It's just a cloth uniform with some armor, and her helmet is not forming an airtight seal. Looks like you're still second in command. Oh, I'm patient. Can you tell which character is being set up to turn heel? Technically, they all are already hills, but one of them is going to turn even more heel. Hint. It's the one whose character design looks like it was based on neo-Nazi Richard Spencer. Hope the landing wasn't too rough. Been through worse. Remember the job S incursion? Still haunts my dreams. This game employs the prequel trilogy method of fleshing out characters. By having them ask each other if they remember the time they did the thing that was just like the thing they just did. Considering that a dev commented on Reddit about this game's loot box system became the most downvoted comment in that site's history, this scene takes on hilarious new implications. Time to remove our helmets while still on an active battlefield like soldiers are wont to do. You wouldn't hear the Death Star exploding down here on Endor. The Death Star is in orbit around the planet, so there's no air to propagate the sound waves. In regards to the space battles in this game, I would just like to say... Boop. So what happens now? We retaliate, Commander. The Empire will assault the very foundation of the Rebels' pathetic belief in themselves. That would be a smart plan. Instead, they set off on a campaign of burning allied Imperial worlds. Go figure. Tell me, Aiden. What is the source of their belief? Hope. When you answer that question with that answer, maybe you should start considering that you might be the bad guys. Well, the secret finally comes out. The Emperor is one half of Daft Punk. Palpatine felt the need to build custom messenger droids with a view screen of his face for his after-death message about Operation Cinder. He could have just left behind a hollow recording. Operation Cinder is to begin at once. Resistance. Rebellion. Defiance. These are concepts that cannot be allowed to persist. Let's just spell out the big plan put in place by the late Emperor Palpatine. In essence, his death means the Empire does not deserve to outlive him. So the Empire is instructed to destroy itself by destroying their own worlds. And the Imperial leaders are fine with this and never catch on to what the Emperor is having them do. Nor do they wonder why the Emperor never enacted this operation while he was still alive if it would have crushed the rebels. I wonder how much Star Wars X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter costs on GOG. Ten dollars? I could be playing that instead of this book tie-in game. And yes, I said book tie-in game, not movie, since most of the references to people and places are from the extended canon in books and comics. God, this game has weird priorities. So much of this game, <coughs> all of it, will revolve around objectives like activating three switches, holding off waves of enemies, waiting for someone to hack a terminal, or blowing up three key points and sometimes a combination of one or more. I know the single player is tacked on, but damn. DICE's other games like Battlefield 1 had a tacked on single player and they did more with it than this. They blew the ion cannon off the rebel ship and it miraculously smashed into a rebel blockade runner. And then that in turn smashes back into the rebel ship, nearly killing Aiden. What are the odds? In space, no less. Had they kept their helmets on, they wouldn't have to worry about being sucked down into space. But these two take them off every chance they get. I guess Stormtrooper helmets itch. I'm sure you won't need that spine anymore. After all, DICE hasn't had need of a backbone in years. Inferno has clearance to access one of the Emperor's classified observatories buried on the planet Pilio. The observatory is protected by a mantle defense system. 
Agent Miko, we need your technical expertise to disable it. Isn't this security system Imperial, though? Shouldn't you have access to the Emperor's Observatory? He wanted the Empire to use the observatories for Operation Cinder. If the Empire is here, what I sensed was true. There must be something special about this place. If you were curious what Luke Skywalker would be like if he were an adult in the prequels, well, this game tries its best to answer that question. Let's just say that he has his dad's delivery down pat. I don't think it's possible to have waterfalls span the horizon 360 degrees around you. Let's check out how much Jedi Knight Jedi Academy costs on Steam. $10 again. So if you want to replicate all the gameplay you can find in this game but done far better, it will cost you far less to buy other Star Wars games. Hell, throw in the original Battlefront 2 and you are set. These bugs killed every other stormtrooper in the cave but only in case Dell and Amber for some reason. Dell survives this. We need to work together if we're gonna get out of here. No, I think you got this, Luke. You were doing pretty well all by yourself. It's just some overly large bed bugs. This game couldn't even be bothered to develop threatening alien life. So why am I still alive? They didn't give me a choice. You did. Well, Dell was restrained when you arrived. Had he not been, I'm pretty certain he would have attacked you too. This is what the lightsaber has become. A bug swatter. Why would the Emperor have a vault that can only be opened using the Force? Maybe because he was a Force user? I'm getting the feeling this single player was made exclusively for people who dive deep into the expanded canon, because a lot of the time they just name drop people in places we never see. Like this compass Luke finds. It's never brought up again, and we have no idea what it does. We just know it belonged to the Emperor. Luke doesn't even know why he wants it. I'd like to keep this compass, if you don't mind. My mission is to destroy this place, why would I let you do that? Your mission is to destroy this place and keep anything inside from falling into rebel hands. So you're in disobedience of your direct orders by giving the last Jedi the thing he wants from it. I'm not blind. I know what the Empire is capable of, but... What else is there? A choice. The Rebellion? No. A choice to be better. Well, that was pointless, since Dell's crisis of conscience is not the main focus. Aiden's is. Why wasn't she the one to meet Luke here and show that she was conflicted over serving the Empire? Now they have to cram that in all at once in the next mission. The Admiral needs us to extract an Imperial ally on my home world of Vardos. The target is Protectorate Gleb, a local official who once mentored both Agent Hask and myself. Uh, excuse me, non-Star Wars fanboy here? Even a person such as myself knows that the Empire was extremely xenophobic and rarely relied on non-humans for anything. So why is Gleb such a VIP that she needs extraction? Also, Gleb is on an Imperial world with no hostiles, with presumably no shortage of safe ways off the planet. But if instead of extracting Gleb normally, they call an Inferno squad who were on another planet at the time to do it. Bardos is our target? One of them, yes. Why? The entire planet and its people, they're, they're loyal to the Empire. The Emperor commands it. Presumably, Admiral Versio never told his daughter Aiden what Operation Cinder would involve because he knew burning their homeworld wouldn't go over well with her. But then he decided to call in her team to extract a VIP from the world they are about to destroy. So go figure. Fear shall spread and the galaxy will remember who is in control. Well, they will certainly think you're crazy for destroying one of your own allied worlds. If Imperial brainwashing is so effective that admirals can't see the ill logic of this plan, it makes me wonder why it doesn't work on Aiden. She should be just as ideological as her father, since unlike Dell, she has shown no doubt on the Empire until now. Activate the satellites now. You couldn't have waited until after Aiden had extracted Gleb before activating the satellites? Just give her five minutes. This game spends a lot of time on Gleb, a character who will do precisely nothing. This is really just a thinly veiled setup so Aiden has a reason to turn on the Empire. Look around you, man. Do you even recognize the Empire Del, anymore? please don't do this. The Just Empire's do this. job is to save civilians from things like Operation Cinder. Are you for real? The Empire blew up Alderaan not that long ago because one rebel leader was from it. Messing with the planet's weather is tame next to that. Also, screw you and your hypocrisy for only caring once it was your world that was about to be destroyed. These are the heroes we are supposed to be rooting for and congratulating for turning on the Empire. The Just Empire's do job is to save civilians from things like Operation Cinder. I would really like to know how you explained the Death Star that you were defending not so long ago to yourself if you believe that. Aiden has no problem killing scores of the people she considered allies just a few minutes ago. You would think she would be at least a bit conflicted. After all, this game is about showing us that not everyone in the Empire was evil. Some were just misguided. Commander, I've got the civilians you sent to the ship. I'm with you, no matter what they say. That was fortunate that all the crew of the Corvus also decided to turn against the Empire based solely on Aiden turning. How did they learn about that, by the way? From the crew's perspective, some civilians showed up at their ship for evac, and from that they deduced Aiden had gone rogue and they should follow her lead. We surrender. Contact the general now. So you thought it was a trap? but brought them on board anyway? Shriv received Aiden's message of surrender to the rebels and told a subordinate to contact Lando. But before Lando could be informed, Shriv had already traveled to where the Corvus was and brought Aiden and Dell on board, meaning he didn't even wait for Lando to weigh in on the matter. Hello, I'm General Lando Calrissian. You must be the Imperial defectors I've heard so much about. Billy D. Williams is the only member of the original cast EA could get. 
And as much as I will continue to joke about the stand-ins for other original cast members, maybe having an elderly man play someone much younger wasn't such a great idea after all, because Billy's age comes through in the performance. He sounds dosed half the time. The Empire's changing, and so are its tactics. If that's the case, why not come with us? Help save that food. This is a one-time deal. You can leave right now, or you can help stop this. Rather than throw Aiden and Del in the brig after interrogating them, Lando decides to immediately put them into action against the Empire by giving them X-Wings and sending them to help Leia on Naboo. Even though they've left the Empire, they have still killed countless rebels. You should not be so quick to trust them. We don't even know how to fly X-Wings. It should be easy for Special Forces. Hell, Special Forces training isn't needed to pilot one. Luke figured it out, and all he ever flew before was a speeder. Speed has a defense system. Something we can use to stop the Empire. But the storm has damaged power relays across the city. Until they're repaired, we can't activate anything. Do all this boring shit, because no one is going to touch this single player anyway, and we don't want to spend much effort on it. An EMP would disable your weapons as well as the stormtroopers. Sure, Leia said the palace would protect their weapons as long as they were inside it, but only a small number of soldiers were inside. Most would be scattered throughout the fighting off the enemy. We've been fighting our whole lives. It's taken us too long to realize that we were fighting for the wrong side. Sorry about that whole blowing up Alderaan thing. We cool? People like you, the reason, hope can prevail. I can trust you because you betrayed your former superiors. Let's just skip ahead a couple of months so we can bypass all that interesting stuff you can make a game about. I need you to find Han Solo. Han gets shoehorned into this travesty as well. Turns out, EA hates your childhood even more than the prequels did. No. Bad game. Shave it. I swear, this game is like an exposed dental nerve. It can still hurt even after it's been patched. I'm meeting an Imperial turncoat. Says he can help us free the Wookiees back on Kashyyyk. While this is a noble goal and something Han would do, it has nothing to do with the overall plot and exists solely so Han Solo can be in the single player. It would have been nice had we gotten to free the Wookiees on Kashyyyk after retrieving this information. With a mug that big, you would think it would take more than one sorority girl-sized swig to down the whole thing. Han Solo! I'm Imperial Specialist Ralsius Paldora. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Why would an Imperial agent, even a turncoat one, be such a raging Han Solo fanboy? I have the information you asked for. Not on me, of course. I've hidden two data cubes in the woods. For safety. No, you hid them because a six hour long game would be three hours if it wasn't composed of padding objectives like this. Please stop wasting my time. Dale purposely leads Aiden on a winding path through the space jellyfish on the way to Cloud City when they could have just flown in a straight line. I have an idea. You're not gonna like it. Yes, such a painful ordeal. Disguising yourself in the old uniform you would be very accustomed to wearing. Won't be needing this useful disguise anymore now that we're in the heart of the enemy compound. Did you really think it would be so easy? Hask. Hask somehow knew not only that the rebels would infiltrate Cloud City, but that it would be his former comrades, Aiden and Del, who showed up, and prepared for that by sending a message to the room he knew they would come to be in. If you can plan this many moves ahead, why didn't you set a trap for them here and kill them? Admiral Versio plans to recover a weapons cache from inside. We are gonna steal it first. I've called in some help to guarantee we do. Shriv, you'll be on the ground with General Calrissian. This game is just throwing half-baked excuses to fit in every main cast member it can, without realizing that this stops them from developing Aiden, the main character and who this story is supposed to be about. Your fan service is getting in the way of developing your main character. Steal the weapons and shut down the factory. Easy enough. But that's what you said about rescuing Han Solo from Java's house. I have no doubt Lando would have claimed that the rescue of Han Solo from Jabba would be easy, but Shriv wasn't around to hear him claim that. He's a new character in this game who wasn't involved in that rescue. Lando isn't burning alive right now. Standing this close to lava would ignite his clothing and boil him alive. Head towards that shovel! Get us to higher ground! The higher ground DLC will cost you $4.99 and apply a 25% damage boost in online multiplayer. This battle could be the end of the war. What happened to that whole Operation Cinder thing? The game spent so much time on it, and it was Aiden's reason for betraying the Empire. Yet here we are in Jakku for the last stand of the Empire, and it has accomplished nothing and isn't brought up again. I'm picking up the stress calls. Too many to count. Del, the Corvus is yours. Cover the sky. Shriv and I will help on the ground. For the big finale during this historic battle, Aiden will mostly be setting it out while helping distress soldiers in the desert. Mission accomplished. We blew up the ship that was already torn in half and burning. Get the Corvus to safety. I'm finishing what we started. I'm gonna get my dad. Aiden, he's not worth it. I have to try, Del. I feel as if I've seen this exact character development before in Star Wars. Aiden survives this. Rax expects me to leave too. This is where I belong. I would love to know who Rax is, but this game is expecting me to read some books to learn that, meaning they left huge holes in their plot that most of us are going to have to wiki. I gave my life to this empire. Fought to keep it strong. I gave my life to genocide. Totes worth it. Deserves better than this. No, I don't, but you do, Aiden. You deserve to live in peace. Go. 
survive, live. Well, that didn't require much arguing. Why did we come here again? Oh yeah, cliches had to be fulfilled. Aiden survives this. Sure, why not? I guess you can tick the romance box off by having Aiden and Dale spontaneously fall in love with no prior development. This game should roll credits right now, because that was an ending and that's how endings work. But they wanted to cram in a Kylo Ren level. The map to Skywalker. You know how I can find it. Here's an older Dell with Kylo Ren, and they are weakly, and I mean weakly, tying Dell to that map plot line by making Dell the guy who knows the guy that has a map to Luke Skywalker. Aiden Mercio made you a traitor. You think she changed you? That your daughter changed you? Could you imagine the shitstorm that would await us if what this game is hinting at with Dale and Aiden's daughter wasn't actually a big red herring born out of stupidity and desperation? This ending is so out of place that the only equivalent I can think of would be Greedo showing up at the end of A New Hope and killing Han during the medal ceremony. Make sure you bury Del Mico and his crew. But leave the covers alone. <laughs> you know it will lead her back here. I'm planning on it. This is normally how you set up the next level in your game, not the sequel. I'm kind of wondering if EA is planning on selling us the ending separately, because this game just sort of shrugs and rolls the credits. Hi, and thanks for watching this video. If you want to continue the discussion about this game, or just chat with me and other fans anytime you like, joining the GameSense Discord server is the most convenient way. Discord is a text, voice, and now a video messaging app you can use right from your browser, phone, and even your desktop. It's completely free to use and you can join my fan server by clicking the link down below. Or you could start your own Discord community for anything you like. My server is an incredibly well moderated community and I hope to see you there soon.